Hey y'all, thanks for tuning back into Chicanic. I hope everybody's having a great week. Do not go anywhere because today I'm letting you in on all the insider secrets. I have worked on thousands of these handheld blowers over the last 12 years of being a small engine mechanic and I know everything that always goes wrong with them. So today I'm going over a few of the most common blowers purchased by homeowners, the most common issues they have, what you might want to avoid, and if you have one of these blowers, how to fix it all by yourself to save you time, money, and frustration in the future. So for this comparison, we are going over the Steel Handheld BG56C, the Echo PB2520, and the Husqvarna 125B. Now first is cost. All three of these blowers are the exact same price at $199.99. 200 bucks, and that's about as much as you want to spend on a handheld blower. Now, a lot of times people are mostly concerned about CCs, and although the Echo has 25 CCs, the Steel has 27, and the Husqvarna has 28, there's a lot of factors that go into how much air volume and speed you're actually going to get, so you might be surprised, even with the CCs, which one blows harder. Now, before I get in too far in this, I do want you to know I don't like or dislike either three of these blowers more than the other one. They all run really well when they're running correctly, but they all have issues and that's what I wanna let you know about. Also, I just wanna knock out some, you know, light general information. When it comes to weight, the Echo is a little over eight pounds, the Steel and the Husqvarna are a little bit over nine pounds. And a lot of times a pound can make a lot of difference depending on how much blowing that you do. Now, when it comes to warranty, Echo automatically offers a five-year warranty for any manufacturer defect and a lifetime warranty on the coil, which is the firing system of it. Steel and Husqvarna are a little different. They both offer two years and then they will extend your warranty double. I think Husqvarna might go to five years if you buy their oil at the time that you purchase the unit. Now, if you buy it from a dealer, they will register it for you, get all your information and take care of that, and it will be in the system. If you buy it from a big box store, then you have to make sure to hold on to your receipt for the life of your warranty because you have to have proof that you actually bought the oil if you have any issues. Now, when buying a handheld blower, there is one number that you really need to pay attention to, and that is the cubic feet per minute. That is actually how much air volume is getting through the tube per minute. So when we look at these three, we look at the Husqvarna and it has 470 cubic feet per minute. That's pretty good. We look at the Echo and it's 453 cubic feet per minute. We look at the Steel and it is 412 cubic feet per minute. So wait a minute, even though the Echo has almost two cc's power less than the Steel, it blows 50 cubic feet per minute more than the steel does. How does that make sense? Which just leads me to insider secret number one, being an Echo dealer for 12 years and probably servicing out, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds of these handheld blowers throughout the years because I serviced every single blower, every single unit that I sold. I'd start it up in the back and I would cringe a little bit inside knowing that the customer could hear it running up front and it just sounded boggy. It didn't sound like it was running top speed at all. And I really think that from the factory, they're mixed a little rich. So although it has these specs of saying what it can do, I don't think when you pull it out of the box, it's going to have that. Now, the good thing about that is most people don't even notice, but at the same time, you do have customers that they just had a blower that burn up and they're, you know, throwing away and they want to get another one. They hear that one go and they're like, that doesn't sound very powerful at all. So they'd say something to me and I'd go ahead and adjust it for them. And the fact is, is with Echo, you got 30 days to get it adjusted for free under your warranty. But sometimes you use it one time and you set it aside and you don't think about it again for a month and you don't have it under warranty anymore for that car first initial carburetor adjustment. So you need to make sure when you buy one of these, you take it home, run it for a while, see if it sounds like it has the power that you want. If it doesn't, take it back to your dealer and see if they can adjust it for you. Because it has the potential, but I don't think it comes with it. Another insider secret is if you're going to buy an Echo, buy the PB2520. Do not get the upgraded 2620. Let me tell you why. I never even kept it in stock because I didn't want to give the customers, you know, the option of trying to figure out which one was better. Because really, the 2620 is $60 more than the 2520. It has a chrome-plated cylinder and two piston rings instead of the one, like on the 2520, to supposedly extend the life of the engine. But the truth is, these never had a problem with the engines. They pretty much last a very long time. But when it comes to specs, the 2620 has the same exact cc's of power as this one. It has the same cubic feet per minute, the same air volume, but it weighs a pound and a half more than the 2520. So what I would do, 
I would sell my customers for $50 less, the 2520, and I would keep in stock the 2620's flare tube that fits on the 2520. That way, if they want a little bit more penetrating power, all they gotta do is pay 11 bucks for this tube. It seems like a win-win. You know, I don't wanna be all doom and gloom. I do wanna tell you some of the good things about Echo. First off, starting. That's one of the main things everybody's concerned with. Echo products start easier than everything, hands down. This rewind assembly will last you forever. I never had any issues out of them. Whoever made this, kudos. When it comes to repair or maintenance, everything's out here in the open, pretty easy to get to, so that's a plus. The on-off switch, never had any issues with them. They actually came out with this curved design on the uh, tube. That way it helps with the torque whenever you go to give it throttle and it torques a little bit on you, so that's pretty sweet. Other than that, it's a pretty good blower when it's running and it's adjusted correctly, but there is another issue. Not gonna lie, probably, you know, a good 40 to 50% of the blowers that I sold, I had to do a warranty repair on them. And that's because their ignition coils seem to go out a lot. Now, Echo's pretty cool about it though. They do have a lifetime warranty on the coil, which means in the first five years of your warranty, you get the coil and the labor paid in full. Now, after that five years, you get the coil for free, but you gotta pay for labor. Now, if you didn't register your product and you have to fix it all by yourself, I do have a video I made on it. When I first started making YouTube videos, I made this video because it was such a common problem. I will leave a link right up above, help you get it figured out. Next up, let's talk Husk Barna handheld blower, the 125B list for 199. It is a pretty sweet blower. Straight out of the box, you're gonna have a lot of power with it. It's adjusted pretty well but these have a huge problem. I've already made a video on it years ago, one of the first videos I ever made because it is such a common reoccurring problem. Every blower that I had into the shop had the same issue. Over time, the first few years that you have your handheld blower, now we're going over a 125B, you'd think they would have changed this um, design over time, but they have not. The fuel line that comes with these blowers deteriorates. And so after the first two to three years of you using it, it will deteriorate and suck that stuff up into the carburetor. And it's like a cascading effect. So once it gets into your carburetor, it clogs up your screen. It's trying to force gas through. So it's making your diaphragms work harder, which makes them suck into the carburetor. So you have to have diaphragms and you have to have a fuel line and it usually rots. You don't really realize it. You don't notice the power going down over time until finally your fuel line rots off in your tank. They really need to upgrade their fuel line design on those handheld blowers and it would be a perfect blower. I mean, other than that, I really never saw any issues. The rewind on them does have that spring assist in it. Every once in a while, I would have to replace those, but it wasn't often. Um, they have no problems with the on off. In fact, it goes directly back into on, like on the steel and the Echo, you have to turn it on every time you wanna use it. It doesn't automatically go back into on. The Husqvarna does. Um, other than that, I can't think of any issues they have. I do have a video though to help you if your fuel line rotted because it's going to. And lastly, when it comes to repair, um, it is a little bit more difficult to work on the Husqvarna. If you're going to take your carburetor off, you're going to have to remove your rewind assembly. You're going to have to remove half of the handle just to be able to get into everything. Now, let's talk about the steels. Now, I have a BG55 that I own, and the, I, we're talking about the BG56C is what the new one that, that they come out with, but the principles are almost exactly the same. They're pretty much the same blower. Now, the, even though they say that it blows 40 cubic feet per minute less than the Husqvarna or the Echo, I really don't feel that whenever I'm running this thing. It's, it's adjusted out perfectly, and I think what attributes to that is the tube size. It's got a, a smaller tube compared to the Echo or the Husqvarna, so I think, you know, it's got more of that penetrating power because it's more focused on wherever it's blowing. The biggest issue that you're gonna have with the BG56C is that they have a spring assist, their easy start system that has this uh, rewind spring inside of it. And I have had a ton of issues with these. In fact, you can put a brand new one in and it'll wanker out on you after the first few pulls. And unlike the Husqvarna, it still has a spring assist, but it's more of a touter spring. This one is really flimsy and we've seen a lot of issues with it. In fact, I made a video a while back, I'll put a link right above to where you can change out the entire rewind pulley to go back to just a, a regular pull start. And these really start easy anyways, so I would definitely get rid of that or avoid it when you're buying a new one. 
Now, when it comes to the fuel line on this one, it's not going to deteriorate. I don't know what steel did. How, they've got a patent on this, but this is like steel makes the best fuel lines, period. You're never going to have an issue with that. When it comes to working or maintenance, if you want to get to the carburetor, unfortunately, you do have to remove the entire rewind cover, half of the handle just to get to everything. Another big issue that I see with these is the spark arrestor screen. Um, uh, unlike the Husqvarna or Echo that we never see issues with, I don't know if it has a tighter mesh or what, they clog up all the time. So I do have a video on that. I will leave a link right above on how to uh, clean or replace your spark arrestor screen. The last problem is a pretty big one, but you're probably not gonna see it unless you've had your blower for many years or you use it every single day, is they start to rattle apart over time. Um, the bolts that go into the engine from behind the flywheel will start to back out into the flywheel and eventually it, it doesn't have anywhere to go. It just goes into the flywheel and then the flywheel catches it and it locks your pull rope up and you think that your engine's locked up, but it's actually just that bolt lodged in the back of your flywheel. You have to remove everything and, and tighten it up, but other than that, it's a pretty good blower. They all have their issues, but Hopefully, now that you know what they are, you'll know how to fix them or avoid them, and that'll save you some time, money, and frustration in the future. If you haven't found me at Facebook, find me at facebook.com slash chicanic. Find me on Instagram at The Real Chicanic, or find me at chicanic.com, where you get your own t-shirts, hoodies, and long sleeve shirts. Thanks, guys, and have a great day.